Hey, y'all. Welcome to my Twitch. It's me, Peppermint. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And you are watching Pep Talks, the weekly interactive show where we cover hot topics, um, issues of the day, and commentary on notable Black cinema that you may have missed throughout her story. Uh, each week, I invite you to throw on your pajamas, your mud mask, and get comfy with me and my celebrity guests as we... <laughs> as we dish our takes on the movies, drama, and our favorite trends and products. Hello, and today's products will be fabulous. Wait until the end of the show. Uh, this is a celebration of all things that I love. Uh, makeup, Black culture, and connecting with each and every one of you. Uh, so I'll be in the comments. I'm charging my phone, but I will be in the comments. Uh, all show pretty much so if you see me looking down that's um that's what i'm doing i'm looking at the comments and i want to know right off the bat raise your hand show up let's say um banana emoji is there a banana emoji yeah banana emoji if you have if this is your first time watching pep talks banana emoji in the comments right now i want to know um anyway today's movie and guest are above the rim the 1990 Three, four, three, two. Damn, I forgot. Uh, and the fabulous Miss Cracker. Uh, and so before we jump in, it's really important that y'all know that I'm sure you've heard us talking about it a lot. You heard us talking about it last week. But we, yesterday, what, today is the very last day for registration for uh, for Georgia voters to register to vote. And so if you're watching this right now, I'm not quite sure, uh, but you still might have time. So I will forgive you if you pause this to go and, and get registered to vote. If you can register online, um, you can go to my socials and I'll be tweeting about it all day. I've been tweeting about it all day today. And so please, 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 just do the first, take the first step. If you live in Georgia, just register to vote. That's the first step. And then we will get to everything else. We'll talk about the rest next week. I'm not going to overload you. Um, anyway, now let's welcome my fabulous, esteemed guest. I'm so excited. Uh, this is our first time like doing something like this because I just started the show. Uh, but I'm very excited to welcome the fabulous Miss Cracker. Miss Cracker, what are your pronouns? Uh, she's a woman. Uh, it's she, hers, all mine, all of that. Yes. I love it. Um, well, welcome to the show, honey. Thank you. I'm so <laughs> excited. And you look gorgeous. I feel very comfortable. I'm ready. Except, you know what I did with my bonnet? I put a little bit. Can you hear this? Oh, yes, ma'am. I put a little. I had to like, put. you know, that's my billowing hair. What am I talking about? That's my billowing that's, hair. That's what it is, girl. <laughs> it's my rollers, Anna. That's my rollers. Yes. Uh, if you are just watching us, if you're watching us on Twitch or YouTube or Facebook, please click the link in the description of uh, or my Twitch profile to leave me a tip uh, and support the production of the show. This show is free to watch, but it is not free to put on. And we've got some very um, hardworking and handsome uh, people that we will be technicians and producers that we are going to be featuring next week on the show. Yeah. We also have uh, Mitch Perino. <laughs> <laughs> but I digress. Please donate by hitting the button so that we can bring you the best every single week um, on the show. And um, all right, right. Let's jump right in uh, quick to this interview. Uh, Cracker. Okay, so I'm like... Forgive me, I am a queen from the 90s and there was like a moment in time when like drag culture sort of changed um, in the 90s. It kind of went, it was like duh, 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 and then jumped over the 90s and then came back in the 2000s. So the whole idea, I get it, but the whole notion of like drag mothers and, and relatives in that way kind of skipped a couple generations of which right. I belong. So are, I know, I think you, okay, first of all, do you have, do you have any drag children? That's my first question. Yes, I do. I have, I have one daughter that I claim, uh, <laughs> Juicy Lou, uh, who is a, a wonderful young drag queen um, here in New York City. And uh, she is hilarious. And I wish she would quit her day job 
um, but she makes more money than all of us combined doing Maybe what she, she does. During so. the pandemic. Yeah, she's and she's working in the pandemic, girl. So I'm like, all right, let her keep it. I wish she would quit her lucrative job and just do drag because she's so gifted. She's fierce. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So one one baby. Um, okay. There's a poll I'm taking. Toilet paper over or under? Oh, ooh, over because I get lost under. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You have to keep going like this if it's under. Yeah. It's up, yeah. Yes. Very that. Okay. I'm glad now, you asked because I've been. It's something that I think about all the time. <laughs> when you like go to put it on the roll, you're like, "Oh wait, that's the wrong way. You got to turn it around, honey." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw this your- thing in like yeah. Harper's Harper's Bazaar that was like, if you are a real good hostess, you should have two rolls of toilet paper um, by the toilet, one that's over and one that's under, so that the different personality types both feel comfortable in your home. Who has double rolls? Doesn't that feel a little wasteful when we're talking about, like, you know, the environment? But is it wasteful to make people feel at home, Peppermint? Come on. <laughs> it's not. Wow. Not <laughs> that doesn't fly in a New York apartment, though, because, honey, no, we, the, I'm not moving my shelf to put another roll dispenser on the wall. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> You're lucky I have a roll dispenser at all, because I've been in plenty of bathrooms. We're just sitting on top of the toilet. Sitting on the back of the toilet, <laughs> girl. Any way you want. Yep. <laughs> right um, above the Ziploc bag of cash in the toilet tank. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just. <laughs> I forgot about that. That's where that money oh. went. That's where your COVID, your COVID nest egg is, girl. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Uh, what is, okay, wait. So who is your drag mom? Is My drag the- is Roberta Elaine the drag queen? Bob the drag queen, yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, what she that's taught me was uh, hard work, and uh, that's pretty much it. You know, <laughs> she taught me how to work hard. <laughs> the rest I taught myself. Who taught you hair, girl? You're so good with hair, and nobody ever talks about that. Thank you, thank you. Uh, um, no, I learned from watching uh, videos. Um, on YouTube, mostly of Perfidia, and I kind of taught myself from YouTube. YouTube has Perfidia. And YouTube has, Perfidia has YouTube videos on. Vi- yeah, on she YouTube. has with a uh, feast of fun. She has this uh, episode where she shows uh, the boys how to tease out a wig, and I just watched it over and over and over again, and applied those skills to different things, and it was just like my obsession because I love hair so much, and uh, now. Um, like Perfidia and I will get together and kiki about hair and it, I, I'm fangirling every time because I'm just like, oh my God, this is who I learned from. She's a legend, you know? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I didn't even put it two, I didn't even put two and two together that when I was watching, um, that when I was here in New York and then we, I was working with Perfidia and then she would do my, like working with her um, in drag and then also having her do my hair kind of separately. Um, that that's who I watched oh, on repeat um, in the Wigstock movie, you know? I mean, there's so many of these. Yeah, things. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's part of the reason I was like, I'm moving to New York City, honey. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wigstock movie is a great movie, yeah. You can't tell, uh, you can't tell by looking at me, but dot, dot, dot. I'm wearing jeans. <laughs> and French fry socks under this. <laughs> now I want to see French fry socks. They sound cute. <laughs> Don't tell nobody. <laughs> Sitting on a secret. <laughs> Let me check the comments. Y'all have any questions for Cracker? Let me know. Let me check these comments, honey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, let me know. I'm not asking me yet. <laughs> I used to be the queen that was like, um, you know, even if I was wearing a hoop skirt, I would be tucked. And then COVID has taught me. You how just started to that at rest. COVID? Yes. It nipples down like I am a hero. And then uh, from nipples up, I'm a woman. You know what I mean? I am just like some, some random guy from the nipples down, 
from for the entire year. And, and yeah, I learned that I in COVID. For the, and honey, didn't we? Don't you know it? It's been it's an entire year. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. It's been an entire year. And I I'm just don't know in- how to walk in shoes anymore. Oh, I, I I put on some heels the other day, <laughs> and I was giving you first time in drags, girl. <laughs> Just, but we are going to be um, well. I, it's probably in the thing, so we'll see. Uh, I want to talk to you about COVID Christmas. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So head on over to my Patreon if you'd like to see me and Cracker talking about COVID Christmas. Juju and her six tacos. That sounds like a whole... Uh, Cracker's pet peeves. What type of drag performer Cracker is. And her trips, her many trips, her life in Africa. That's what I'm going to say, her life in Africa. Yes. Um, So we have some very exciting news here at Team Peppermint. We have added Discord to our Patreon member benefits. Fancy. This means that if you join my Patreon, you'd be supporting me and the production of Pep Talks and also, okay, gain access to a Patreon-only chat uh, and have the ability to be a part of our virtual video chat audience, which is basically like a screening of the show, uh, which we affectionately call the candy dish. Um, in case you're unfamiliar with Discord, here's some quick instructions. You create an account on Discord, number one. You log in to Patreon, number two. You click on the Apps tab, number three. You click Connect to Discord app. Okay, so you have to connect it to your Discord app. And then number four, you log into Discord and find the candy dish. Super simple. Um, So make sure you do that if you are a Patreon member. And then during the show, y'all can have your own chat party and talk. I might even drop in there every now and again. (laughs) Hmm. Um, Okay, so today's movie is Above the Rim. Uh, I'm going to show you the uh, trailer right now. Okay, so that was the trailer of Above the Rim. And for those of you that didn't just see the trailer or didn't watch the movie. The synopsis is uh, this film tells a story about a promising New York City high school basketball star, Dwayne Martin, who is so fine, okay? That's all I got to say. And his relationships with a drug dealer, Tupac Shakur, and a former basketball star, Leon, who is also, I mean, they're also sex, I mean, okay. I got to calm down. It's like, I get a little excited. Uh, <laughs> Leon is now employed as a security guard at the high school where he was uh, a promising young star years and years ago. And so that, that's it. Um, okay, so let's just jump right in. What are your, first of all, did you see Above the Rim? Oh, for, okay, here go, 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 go. Bitch, how old, how, what bracket are you in? <laughs> I am proud to say I am 36. Okay, years old. so it's not that out of the question that you may have come in contact with this movie before. Yeah, I've come in contact with the movie before, but I haven't seen the whole thing until mm-hmm. I watched it yesterday. Okay. And uh the trailer, I I was hooked from the trailer. From the tra- and uh <laughs> <laughs> and it was like it's it's it was like it's a good film, and you got to see there's like two Tupac that are available. There's like um, a poetic justice Tupac, which is like good Tupac, and then Juice Tupac. And we were lo- watching Juice Tupac. We were this is ju- this is basically Juice Tupac, yeah, yeah. And they made a whole, you know, this is one of the. Um, I think this is when they finally started to catch their not to jump too far ahead, but I think that this is uh, above the rim is when they, when they, people who make movies, finally started to kind of catch their groove in terms of, like, the the story of the hood, hood movies. Um, you know, one of the earliest ones was Boys in the Hood. Uh, we went kind of off astray on, like, movies like New Jersey Drive um, uh, and, and Menace to Society, which were, like, extremely sort of, um, I think, extremely, extremely heavy on the violence aspect yeah. of it. The 
Above the Rim really kind of brought it back to like some story and a little bit yeah. more heart. It wasn't just like gangster movie, like um, Fall or exactly. It was there was like it went. It had a nice flow to it, and so uh, I really enjoyed the movie. Obviously, um, yeah. what are your thoughts on the acting? Oh, I mean, I thought the acting was great. And also, I thought that, I mean, anytime Tupac is acting with, like, the, when he does the real sincere eye it, contact. Intense. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, intense. I call it intense. Yeah, it's <laughs> intense. He's got those Sesame Street eyebrows. You know what I mean? Just, like, one. <laughs> you know what? He does. <laughs> just, like, Bert and Ernie eyebrows is one nice, strong eyebrow. And just, like, ah. Oh. So that man is ridiculously handsome. That's all you're thinking the whole time. Um, But, like, beyond... The character acting, like one of the characters, of course, is the city. And it was kind of crazy to see a lot of my streets, like where I, my street was in uh, the movie. And you can see the city university up there on the hill in a lot of the shots. And I was like, oh, my God, this is my this is like I'm here. This is home. This is a story of my home. It's beautiful. Yeah. That's probably what happened for me because the first time I saw it, I was in high school. And so then, not even in high school, I was like just joining high school. But this must have come out in 1992. Can we get us some in info on that, anybody, please? Um, uh, because I was in eighth grade when the soundtrack came out. Yeah. Oh, and wow. So, oh, my God. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I mean, <laughs> Just tell me when the damn movie came out. 1994? Uh-huh. Okay, I was not in eighth grade when the soundtrack came out. I was in yeah. high school. Okay. Um, but I guess I must have March. I guess I was a... F Who cares? The point is 1994. Um, and uh, I don't even know where I was going with that. Why did I ask when it came out? You just wanted to let people know. <laughs> You wanted to uh, let people know where you were in life. <laughs> the uh, we were saying how it's like your city, your oh, so the first time around, I I didn't live in New York City at that point, so it's the same exact thing. Like seeing it this time around, I was like, oh my gosh, and recognized so many places, uh, you know. And I love that. That's one of my favorite things about New York movies. I guess that would be my favorite thing about any movie is seeing it, you know, a movie that was in my neighborhood. Yeah. Um, so what do you think about, like, there was there was just, like, a, a real propensity to uh, examine the lives or stories of Black men through the lens of sports and crime only right. in the right. 90s. Do you think, and, and for, there was, there was certainly a notion in the 90s, especially uh, surrounding 90s hip-hop music and rap music, where... Uh, this was the kind of the story of we're taking someone from the streets or taking someone f who's who's had a rough go at it in their neighborhood, in their area, and we're giving them a, a, a platform or they have a platform now to tell their story. And what the story that we were used to hearing from people f was, was this, you know, very rough, you know, upbringing, which is very real. Um, I think we kind of got trained into sort of wanting the story from black men to be about either sports or drug life, drug dealing, you know, crime. Um, and and I, I'm curious to know, like, what, do, how do you think this movie sits with that? Like, do you think that it was kind of too much in that, like, sort of, you know, black men are only sports or gangsters? Because that's pretty much the choice in this movie. It's like, you're either going to be a sports star or a gangster. Period. So, like... On the, uh, well, I keep hitting my mic. Um, on the con side of things, it's like, uh, I would say that it's it would be dated for, for setting that up, right? Because it's saying, um, it's saying that his only options are either sports or crime and um, sh showing that side of things. Um, and I do see how that can be like a dated perspective. On the other side, it's like a really timeless story because... Um, it's about the options of uh, going on the, the good path, right? 
or mm -hmm. the path that may be a little bit easier, but is going to cause a lot more harm and trouble. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, in a way, I think it, it had a timeless feel to it. I, I think that, um, you know, you watch him struggle with those, those options and those are, uh, things that a lot of people can identify struggling with, like the, the so-called easy way out. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there was definitely, obviously, a dated aspect about it. Um, but it, at the same time, I think the reason that it survives is because of that. You know, that 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 pull for the so-called easy way out and the, the or or taking the higher road. You know, mm -hmm. did anybody? Did any of you all um, in the audience in the comments has anybody? Did you all watch the movie? That was my assignment from last week. I want to know if y'all watched the movie. Um, put a basketball emoji if you watched the movie, because um, I want to meow, <laughs> and I'm going to be talking to you in the comments here. Um, okay, we got some. Cracker, uh, tell me um, what is... Okay, this is the thing that's really interesting is... Ooh, I won't... <laughs> <laughs> crunch, 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 crunch. <laughs> One of the things that I think is really interesting is in the 90s, um, I, I, just, I, I have to be careful and choose my words here very carefully. Um, with Tupac and like this, the life that as a quote unquote like gangster in the streets on in this movie, um, they didn't really. I, one thing that I wish they would do a better job of, not only in this movie, but across the board in the 90s, which is too late because the 90s are right. over, um, showing more of the decision and the the pressure to... Making him a little more complicated. Yeah, making him a little more complicated. He's just like this gangster who's just choosing this. I mean, I'm not... I, it, they they just didn't really show the nuances of what are the situations with the system that put people in in the situation where they make that choice. Obviously right. he doesn't want to do basketball, but I mean, what's happening, you know? Yeah. One one moment where I did feel like uh the sympathy for him or like a glimpse into his world was with the moment with the razor blade. Cause ah. there's this scene where he's watching some people play basketball and he's mm -hmm. like, you know, I could never get the hang of that. And then he pulls out a switchblade like this with just a breath of air. And he's like, but I could get the hang of this. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, there's this, this, this lesson that he learned was that, um, you know, the only way he was going to succeed was with, was with force and with the streets. And like, I, uh, knowing that he, um, that his mother struggled to put food on the table and that they came from a, a really rough time when the older brother left, you know, you, you can see for a minute right there, like, Oh, I see why he made this decision. Cause this right. is something he could get, you know, he, he didn't, quickly. yeah, he wasn't good at, at basketball. basketball. He wasn't, you know, he didn't have promise, but this was an area he had promise in and he was good at. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that gives you a little bit of a glimpse. I mean, it could definitely do more because he's definitely like he's definitely the villain. There's no, there's no he's question. He's the villain about that. in the, in the yeah. movie. Him, him, right. in the, in the, 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 the choice, the, 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 the presence of that choice is right. The villain, I guess. I guess right. It's what he represents. He's the devil yeah. on uh, the on Kyle. Is wait, is that his name? The main character. Uh. Uh, he's the devil on the main character's shoulder, basically. Dwayne Martin's shoulder. What is Dwayne Martin's character's name? We'll figure. We'll find out real quick. I forgot. Because <laughs> Kyle sounds wrong. They all have some crazy names. Like the names yeah. are so, like a little like okay, like <laughs> yeah. I remember <laughs> Shep, name. Though. I remember right. the oldest brother being named. His nickname is Shep, and he is just yes. uh, yeah. He's like four million feet tall. <laughs> That's what I remember. You can put it there. Rick. You can put it there. Um, okay, wait. So, uh, yeah, okay, we got some people saying that they that they watched the movie. Very good. Okay, y'all have any questions about this movie here? Um, what's the personal impact 
on your life. It's Kyle, by the way. Um, I got it. I got it. I was like, I was right. <laughs> <laughs> what are the personal, uh, what's, is there any kind of personal impact or relevance either today or on your life? Like, how is this movie relevant? And, and, well, actually, that, those are two different questions. First question is, watching this movie as a non-Black yeah. person, yeah. Uh, what is the impact on you uh, with regards to the choices that the characters had to make in the show and in, in, in the movie and kind of what their stories were and how that translates into your understanding of Black culture in this country? Well, I just like, um, it does go to what you were saying that there is um, an oversimplified uh, representation. I mean, that is what I uh, I see in this film. Like, we know that movies do not represent very well the cultures that they that they show all the time. But um, it is it it does show me what an important um, like what an important feeling there is. Uh, around uh, how culture celebrates sports for black men, that they, what that expectation is. And um, I remember reading Malcolm Gladwell and he was saying, um, it's, there's so much pressure on black men to succeed in sports and to have that um, be an area of achievement. Like you can see that th this film is part of that. Um, but there's also something really beautiful in um, his ideas, uh, his aspirations, like as a human being, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. his aspirations kind of lifted out of that. So while you realize that there's a stereotype there and you're learning about how this movie is part of that pressure, like there's still something really beautiful about the aspirations of the main character, the dream. Yeah, and it... Um... You're right. It, it it's very palpable in this movie in particular. I mean, I think a lot of the movies that have um, this certainly isn't the only movie where they showed a young black man kind of having to any young kind of I don't want to call it coming of age, but has to yeah. make a decision. No, yeah. or something. But this is in this movie alone. It's it's about that choice, like specifically about that choice. Um, and it's really nice to see that he's able to kind of pick up where Leon, I guess, would have left off as no longer the star, uh, yeah. you know, uh, the basketball star. And I think yeah. Leon is so beautiful. <laughs> I was so excited for the mom. <laughs> I was like rooting for the mom more than it. That was the main story for me. I was like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, she's trying to cut in line to talk to Leon. <laughs> um, how important is it to support Black films? Uh, the, the, I want to preface it by saying this: the whole the whole reason I even started this show is because I have I'm a movie buff, and I go yeah. to see every you had a show movie. Do the right thing for a while, didn't you? Yes, yeah. We, all the stuff that I've done has been named after. Black films, and so I, yeah. you know, I like black films, but I I see all kinds of movies, and um, and I used to go with some of my white girlfriends to see movies frequently, and every once in a while, a movie with an all black cast or mostly centers around black issues yeah. would come out, and a lot of times those girls would not want to go see the movie with me, and right. I was like, this is this ain't right, um, right. and so. You know, that's kind of what inspired me to want to do this movie, to do this show, because yeah. I think it's important to kind of have these conversations and be able to talk about this stuff, especially given the year that we just had. Um, well, yeah, I think it's like, if you take a leap and you, if you say, okay, this kind of movie is not for me, take a leap and watch a couple of uh, films so that you can begin to understand uh the language of a culture and um, then you will have access, then you will be able to get into it. Yeah, that first film may be something you're like, I don't get this. But you know, if you start with a few like classic films, I guarantee you will be hooked. Um, and yeah, like I remember for All Stars 5, um, not to spill tea, but- um, Oh, spill they let tea, me. darling, that's why yeah. I picked up my cup. 
<laughs> they let me have one um, afternoon off, and I had a choice of varieties, uh, 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 like a variety of things I could do. And I saw that Do the Right Thing was playing. Um, <gasps> and oh, great to talk city. about it. <laughs> so I got like the, the the cap and the glasses, and uh, went out, <laughs> went playing out. at the theater. It was playing at a theater. They were. It was the twenty fifth, or I think uh, the twenty fifth or thirty fifth anniversary um, of the film. And I just remember how much that film impacted me as a young person, and um, like how much it teaches you. It teaches you about. Uh, being a white person as well, like the mistakes that you make as a white person. Um, and so I went out and saw that film. I had a chaperone and it was, it was exactly, it was exactly what I needed. Um, yeah. because it's, I mean, it's about doing the right thing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So I don't know. It's like, if you choose to not, uh, watch black films, it's like, it, it's your loss because you're just missing out on this whole incredible language of film, I think. Mm -hmm. That is Yeah, great. so I, I wanted to say really quick, you were asking what, the, what this film, what Above the Rim, what the message, mm -hmm. why it would be impactful to me right now. Mm -hmm. And sort of watching the older brother, he had an opportunity at his life where he gave up because he went through hardship. And... Um, as the mother in the movie says, like, you always run when you have the chance, you know? And I've been thinking about, like, how hard it is to keep doing drag in times like this. And uh, I, so many times I'm just like, I give up. And I'm watching this film, I was like, you know what? It's not just about you. Other people are depending on you to do your thing. Um, other people are looking at what you do. So you can't just run away when there's hardship. And, um... That was one of the that was one of the reasons I thought it was important to watch this film for me right now. Um, that message is in there. That's um, yeah. I mean, that's I guess that's really like the the if we don't know the the meaning of life, that's certainly one that we can carry until we find out the real answer. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't give up. <laughs> don't you give up? Uh, there, this, I, one of the things, okay, another thing I love about watching this movie, going back and watching this movie, this, I did not even really jump into. Number one is, um, the, the cast. We all, we talked about the cast. It's an amazing cast. Uh, yeah. but there's, everyone is in this, this is like stars, like Black Hollywood Ber Bernie is Mac. in this movie. So Tupac, Dwayne Martin, Marlon Wayans, Bernie yes. Mac. Yes, yes. Many, a couple of those folks are already dead. Um, uh, Tanya Pinkins, Leon, who is so sexy. Now he goes by Leon Roberts, his old name, but he, but he used to he used to just be called like Leon, and like, Ooh. so sexy. Um, uh, Henry Simmons, and uh, there's obviously many more people in the movie, but um, you know who's in there that I I never could see him I couldn't tell if that was him in the movie or not but until I um when I worked at Lips restaurant uh he Shut lived up. right next door to Lips restaurant he would come I'm he sure. would, wouldn't go into Lips restaurant but he was <laughs> always out front of Lips restaurant like getting ready or like leaving or getting waiting for his car whatever he's doing um and yeah. he would talk with the girls who were out there smoking or hanging out whatever they were doing um yeah. is Eric Neese who was the um first like model Pretty Boy on season one of The Real World. And he's yeah. the white guy on the other team in the yeah. school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, yeah. So I remember thinking, oh, wow, Erickson above the rim. That's the first thing. Second, okay, so great cast. But my, one of my favorite SWV songs and all of the history of SWV songs, which is a remix, not even the regular version of the song, is uh, the Anything remix um, on, uh, it's called the Old School Remix, featuring um, uh, 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 Wu-Tang Clan on, um, on the soundtrack. And this soundtrack is so good. 90s soundtracks for their movies, oh. they were like, they put, it was almost like they put almost as much money into the soundtrack as they Absolutely. did the movie. Having yeah. the stars on it, getting the right songs and everything. Um, these days, you're kind of like, what's they use kind of 
You don't yeah. even know. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I got to say about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Do you remember that song? Anything you want to do, I am going to try to. But that was the first time I'd ever seen Yaki w- w- Weave hair <laughs> in a video because they, they used to only have silky in the early 90s. Very, very, very straight silky hair for everybody, yeah. but everybody's yeah. hair ain't straight and silky. And so they started coming out with hair that you can buy that matched the texture of other people's hair, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I'm just educating yeah. everybody else. And so this kinky, yaki hair, they call it yaki, it's just kinky hair, yeah. was in this video. And they were flowing, honey. I was like, oh my God, I want to be in that video. Um, <laughs> okay, and let now. me, while I check the comments, um, I want to promote Miss Cracker. You got some great things going on, girl. Cracker has n- not one, but two singles out immediately uh, today. Uh, first one is Eight Days of You with Juju B. And the second one is um, <laughs> Get, Get the, me the uh, app out of here. Get out of here. Which I'm like, what the? Okay, so wait, we have a clip uh, that we can play right now. I heart you. I know you do. Oh, girl. Okay, girl. You got me. You know what? I've been waiting for some music from you, honey, little Miss Thing. Okay? <laughs> I've been waiting for full albums. But yes, this is wet well, my whistle very nicely. Yeah, girl. You're going to have to do with the appetizer for right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a... I've had a whole, I can make a whole meal out of an appetizer. Have your song on repeat. And believe me, I had an entire box of Fruity Pebbles for dinner last night. So I can make a good meal of your uh, song for a whole album, honey. Uh, this is amazing. It sounds great. Um, folks, make sure you listen to it. Download it. Buy it. Don't just stream it. Buy it. Go to iTunes or wherever you can actually purchase a, a 99 cents music. And um and get get both singles right now. And the music video I hear is coming out um next like re- like now. Look for the music yeah. videos. Yeah, she's out. <laughs> and of course, you and I are teaming up together uh, with Bob the Drag Queen, Al- uh, um, uh, Alaska, Katya, Trixie, and uh, Juju B, and a whole host of queens for New Year's Queens on Sessions Live. You all, you are not going to want to miss this. This is an ex- extravaganza. It's an 11 hour drag a thon with live performances and all kinds of fabulousness, and even an available option for uh, meet and greets. Uh, and so that's fabulous. Cracker and I are hosting together the earlier part of the night. Um, when I say earlier part of the night, I mean until midnight, East Coast time. Right. Uh, New York time, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and you can get tickets at sessionslive.com backslash New Year's Queens. Uh, get those today. Um, and just another reminder, before the show, we talked about COVID Christmas, Juju and her six tacos, Cracker's pet peeves, what type of drag performer Cracker really is, and her life in Africa. Uh, if you want to watch all of that tea that we did before the show, please head over to my Patreon where you can find uh, that and also other exclusive behind-the-scenes content and videos and full episodes of Pep Talks. Blah! Um, and so right now, it's time to segue. to have a drink. And then it's time to segue into uh, a section, this is product of the week. And you know, we get so many, I'm Cracker, I know you're the same boat, we get so many uh, products sent to us. I mean, and I'm very grateful for it. Some of them I asked for, most of them I do not. But um, (laughs) this finally gives me the opportunity to figure out what to do with this, because if I don't need 10 containers of glitter, if I don't need 10 containers of glitter, but I finally have 
of what place to, to, to kind of talk about those things and try them out. And so I've tried this product out. This is uh, from ColourPop. It is called Glitterly Obsessed. And, um, and there, it's hard to see here. I'm going to hold it. But we hear, here's a picture of it for those of you that want to see a picture of it, which is all of you. Um, and that's the packaging. It's, uh, it's about, um, I was going to guess how many, um, how many ounces it was. It is, bitch, I can't even read this. It's so tiny. I can't even read. The point is um, that it is actually a really good body glitter. Now, you could use this for on your eyes, obviously. Um, I will put some on to show you. Um, it has a really dense um, play. If you want to hear, can, can you hear it? No. Oh, you can't hear it. No. <laughs> okay, I tried to like do some ASMR. You can't hear it. Um, they use extremely chunky glitter, um, and it's suspended in, I'm not sure what it's suspended in, but whatever it's suspended, it's really slippery. So it's hard to know if this will dry or not, but let me show you how dense this is. And when I say dense, it just basically means a lot of glitter in a yeah. little bit of space. Oh, wow. Um, I can't wait. Where am I? There she is. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a little bit better. And so very, very nice. It's really good. Um, it, it gives me... Um, oh, I hope my crotch didn't just show. No, ma'am. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, it. It definitely gives a... It gives... Uh, Midas Touch by Electra, uh, Electro Cosmetics, uh, Electra Cosmetics, um, the body glitter that I've been wearing since I even wore it on Broadway. Um, it gives, it gives them a run for their money, but it's not quite my favorite. It does wear long and it it lasts a long time. One of the things that I don't love about this is that the, the glitter chunks, the bigger chunks of glitter are heart shaped. And I don't like those, like, I don't like glitter that, ha like, that tells me what it, I should feel. Like, you know, <laughs> I don't want a flower. I don't want a snake. I don't want to, it just should just be jagged shapes so that I can do what I want. That's my thought about a body yeah. glitter. I don't want, like, hearts and roses because then it feels, like, inappropriate. Like, in a photograph, you wouldn't want to have hearts unless it was, like, every single symbol that you can imagine, like hearts and dollar signs and like, you know, yeah. cross and X's and penises yeah. or whatever, then that's something like the lucky yeah. charm, gay lucky charms. But yeah. a bunch of hearts is just like for little girls. Not, not gay lucky charms. Let me stop oh, that. My it's goodness. For, for little children. Um, and wait, what'd you say? Not gay lucky charms. I can't, you know, <laughs> she's ready for her Delia's advertisement shoot, you know? <laughs> I'm not criticizing. I mean, it does stay on. Um, and I would use it in a pinch. Like, I'm going to continue to use this. Um, the hearts are also, like, really rainbow AB. You can't really see. So it kind of changes the color. This doesn't, it's supposed to be gold, but it, it changes the color to rainbow, which is all right. It's all right. Um, anyway, so that's my thoughts on it. You can get this um, Color Pop, Cop, Color Pop, Hopeless Romantic. Um, is it? That's the that's the name of the color, by the way. Did I say that already? Not yet. It's glitterly obsessed is the line. Hopeless romantic. Okay, I guess that's why it has the hearts. Okay, so Yee! it's in the name. Um, ColourPop is an American brand of cosmetics uh, based in Los Angeles, California. Yay! And the founders and siblings, Laura and John Nelson, made a conscious decision to market ColourPop specifically via social media to a primarily millennial audience. And I do remember um, watching a little video on them and their first palette years ago. And I'm really proud of ColourPop for... Um, doing what they've been doing. And I'm thankful for you sending this to me. Believe me, I will use it till the very last drop. Uh, so I want to say a quick thank you very much to all of you for watching the show. Uh, and thank you to Miss Cracker for joining. I can't wait to, just twice in one month, we get to work together. Uh, 
Actually, well, we're not quite working together, but you know, we get to be together. Um, and I'm excited about that. And don't forget, next week, everyone, we will be featuring Rafe and Mitch. So y'all better put, do whatever you got to do. Get your um, get your hair, get your gilt as your hair or your chapstick, whatever you're gonna wear. Um, and I'm gonna announce next week's movie. We're gonna spin for it right now. Oh wow. Okay. And next week's movie is Bats. Could you hear it? I wanted you to hear the the <laughs> thing. Um, next week's movie is BAPS. I'll unplug right. my phone so you can see it. So right. that's the movie next week. Um, and next week's guest is <laughs> Valentina. Valentina. I'm so excited. Uh, it's she, Valentina. <laughs> um, so <laughs> by the way, if you're just joining us, please head over to my Patreon to see everything you just missed, basically. Uh, and do not forget, please, 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 to get yourself a pre-sale copy of my vinyl album, a pre-sale vinyl copy of my album, uh, A Girl Like Me. If you don't have the $30, it's all good. You can stream it right now because it's already out. Um, but pre-sale gets special merch if you purchase it now. Pre-sale ends December 16th, so one week left to go before pre-sale um, ends. And then after that, the price goes higher. But right now, if you get it, it comes with free merch. And believe me, it is a piece of merchandise that is relevant to one of the major moments that I have this summer. That's all I'm going to say. Um, or this past summer. Um, so uh, if you want to watch, by the way, watch BAPS this week uh, so you can be up to speed next week. By the way, this is a movie that uh, Valentina um, requested. Uh, to watch specifically. Um, so watch the movie yourself like now or tomorrow or, or before the week, before next week, so that you can be caught up and be in those comments, honey. Um, thank you all so much for watching Pep Talks and we'll see you later. <laughs>